Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we're going to do this 3D transition effect in HitFilm Express. So I've been using this effect for a while now, and I've gotten some requests to show how I do it. It's actually super easy to do. So I'm just going to use a couple of video clips. I'm going to drag one in and then I'm going to drag in another one. And what I'm going to do is go into the exact spot where the two meet right there. And then I'm going to give myself one second in front and one second behind. So all I have to do is just back up exactly one second and using the slice tool, I will slice that. And then if I go forward by one second, I can slice that side. So now I'm just going to work with these two slices here. I'm going to start with the first one and right click on it and make into a composite shot. The uh, hotkey is control M on my PC, clicking OK. Now you can see that I have 30 frames in this case uh, at 30 frames per second. I have 30 frames of this clip. And what I'm going to do is to make a 3D transition, I need it to be three dimensional. So I'm going to click on the layer dimensions icon and select 3D plane. Now, if it, it should add a camera, okay? If it does not add a camera, that is because your options and your prompts and warnings, this will be checked on. Prompt me before converting 2D composite shots into 3D. I have that checked off because if I want it to be 3D, then I just, hey, make it 3D. Don't ask me. It's just an extra step. But if it asks you, definitely uh, say yes, because you'll need it to be. Now, if I open up the transform properties of the clip itself, you can see that now I have three-dimensional rotations and also scale. And I'm actually going to go ahead and keyframe all four of those. So I am clicking this little circle icon to add keyframing and you can see that the keyframes are added. I'm going to go ahead and scrub to the end of the timeline and under scale I'm going to shift that to 50% and now it is setting a keyframe so that will interpolate over that time and then I'm going to set rotation x to 90 degrees, rotation y to 90 degrees, and rotation z to 90 degrees. So the whole thing is going to whoop away like that, okay? Now, I want this to have a little bit of pizzazz, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these four keyframes, and I'm going to make them manual bezier, all right? And then, not only that, but I'm going to open up the value graph, and you can see that if I select these, there is little handles here, and you can actually adjust those, okay? What I want to do is hold down the shift key and drag it to to the right. It will stay on the same line if I hold down the shift key. So I will select the rotation, grab the handle and drag it over again, holding down the shift key. And I will do that for all three of these rotations. This will just add a little bit of a ramping effect into that rotation. So now when it happens, it starts slow and then flings off. Okay. The last thing I want to do is go ahead and click on motion blur. So that way, when this does happen, there is a motion blur, a realistic blur that happens with it. Okay, so now that is what I did with the first one second clip. Now I'm going to take the second one second clip and essentially do the exact opposite to come out. So I'm going to right click and make into a composite shot, clicking OK opening up the transform properties. Uh, oh, before I do that, let me set this as a three dimensional plane. Then I can go ahead and keyframe scale and rotation for all three. I'm going to set this to 50%, just like I did before. These, however, I'm gonna set to negative 90 so that they look like they're coming out. Negative 90 and negative 90. Then I will scrub to the end and I will reset this to 100 for the scale and zeros for the rotations just like that so that it will look like it's coming out of that rotation. I'm going to go ahead and select all of the end keyframes and convert them to manual bezier. Again, opening up the value graph, I'm going to grab each one of these using the shift key and slide the handle over. Again, just to add a little bit more pizzazz to it. 
And then the very last thing I will do is turn on the motion blur. And that is it. So now if I back up here, you can see that this will fade out and fade in just like that. Okay. Now this works great if you are converting this to say, or rendering this out to an MP4 or something like that. However, uh, if you're rendering this out to something that may have transparencies, for example, if it is a, a PNG sequence, an AVI with the uh, alpha channel or something like that, then this will come out to be transparent, not necessarily black. But you can always add something behind this if you want. So for instance, I would grab this and slide these up into a new layer, and then I could add whatever I want. It could be another picture or a video, something like that in here. You can add a plane here with a fill color or a color gradient or something like that to make the background. Whatever is your choice, however you like to do it. I just like to keep it plain black behind there. Uh, but basically, that's it in a nutshell. So if you have any questions, uh, do me a favor and leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer those for you. Um, if you like this kind of content, do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon for notifications. Feel free to share this with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching.